Hey guys, Mambroski here. Today I'm going to show you how to power level a Neo while getting some fat loots. Uh, so go ahead and hit that like, follow, subscribe button and enjoy. Okay guys, so basically how we're going to do this is Murabashi, uh, which is a mission that you get outside of the dojo. However, we are going to be doing a lot of stuff inside the dojo to get it unlocked. Um, the first thing that you're going to have to do is get Way of the Warrior on Veteran unlocked um, and basically just play the game. It's kind of impossible to not unlock that pretty darn early on. It base, it's 300,000 weapon proficiency based on any weapon. And weapon proficiency, what's that? Um, weapon proficiency is the experience you get on a weapon. Or in this case, uh, on any weapon. Um, so basically, you kill a mob, you get 300 experience. You're going to get experience on your weapon. That will tally up. Um, you're probably going to get through like the first two to three zones before you get 300,000. Not a big deal. It doesn't take very long. Um, but once you get Way of the Warrior Veteran unlocked, here's the more important thing. Um, Zen and Sword are 1, which is single sword proficiency. Um, you need to get 500,000 on that to unlock this. This is a Mystic uh, skill unlock. And I'll get into later what Mystic skill unlocks are, but they're very, very important. Um, the other one that you're going to need to unlock is Steel Across Steel. That's Spear proficiency, obviously 500,000 proficiency, just like the other one. And there's a third one that you really need to unlock as well. This is for dual sword proficiency. You don't need this to unlock the missions. However, the build that I'm going to supply you with to efficiently take down the bosses in Murabashi and the prerequisite mission, which is the two masters that you unlock from getting your sword proficiencies here um, with what I've just shown you, uh, it's the sign of the cross build, and man, it is awesome. It makes this so easy, and uh, it's going to make your runs way more efficient than pretty much any other build you're going to run across this early in the game. Okay, so you just finished those dojo missions. Um, your next step is going to be the two masters, which is in the Tokai region. Um, so this is pretty easy. Uh, it shouldn't take you very long. Let's go ahead and boot it up. Faster, 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 Okay, guys, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to cheese this. No reason not to. You're going to do this once and never come back here. So the first thing you want to do is go to learn skills, go to your ninja tree, drop down here. Um, what we're going for is paralytic ground fire. So put a point in Poison Hemlock uh, Broth if you haven't already, point in uh, Poison Medusa Powder, then it'll let you drop down and put your points into Paralytic Ground Fire. Um, if you have the points to do it, you want to max this out. Uh, it should give you nine. They're amazing. They make everything easier. Um, the other one that you're going to want to get, and this is kind of game-changing, is uh, the Sloth Talisman. And in order to get that, you're going to have to put a point into Vigorate Talisman, drop down one, Lifesteal Talisman, then come over to Sloth, max that one out too. They're amazing. You're going to use them throughout the game. Okay, so right off the bat, go ahead and throw down a ground fire. This is kind of your safety net in case things go bad. You can always run back here, and uh, that'll paralyze them. So as soon as they spawn, throw another one down. Wait for it to go off. They both got trapped. I'm using Sign of the Cross. Let that guy go. It's over 9,000! So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of spam Sign of the Cross on him. Now this other guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and heal up. The Paralytic Ground Fire does not work well on him. So we're going to sloth him. That's going to make him run and attack really slow. And that is going to allow you to throw down some Ground Fires and actually catch him. Oops. Bad placement. There we go. And that's that. Pretty easy if you cheese it. Okay, so once you guys finish that, um, right on top of the same mission, just uh, hit your right button. Murabashi's unlocked. That's where we're going next, so go ahead and boot that up. Faster, 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 faster. All right, guys, so before we start this off, um, probably the most important thing is the Sign of the Cross build. And some of you might have came here specifically to see how the Sign of the Cross build works. Um, so you're going to go to Learn Skills. Um, if you don't have it already, go over to Dual Swords. And conveniently, it's the first thing that you're going to be able to unlock. Uh, so come over once, Sign of the Cross right there, go ahead and unlock that. Uh, come over again and uh, get Sign of the Cross too. Uh, it says greatly reduces the, the time needed to gather energy for Sign of the Cross attack. Basically, it means it's going to let you use it faster, which is really important because when you first get it, it kind of takes a little bit for it to go off, and that leaves you open to attacks. Another important ability is going to be, if you have it unlocked at this point, which you probably do, is going to be your Mystic ability. Um, don't take 
Themistic ability for defense that reduces damage after consecutive attacks. Uh, don't do that. If you're doing this right, you shouldn't be taking damage. If you're taking damage, you just need to practice with it more. Um, take this one. Take the take the uh, momentum. Is what it's called. It's amazing. Um, it basically allows you to sign it to cross indefinitely. Uh, it's which even if they're if someone's turtling, you can sign it to cross over and over and over, and eventually it's going to break their guard and you're going to be able to just wreck them when they hit the ground. Because any time that you hit someone on the ground, you can hit them from behind. Not only do you get from behind damage, but they actually take a little bit more damage just for being on the ground. Okay, guys, so you know Sign of the Cross build is literally just you spamming Sign of the Cross. That's not complicated. However, the other important part of the build is the gear. Um, it's a Master Swordsman's power set. That's what it's called. I'm not going to try to pronounce the, the dual sword weapon um, that is part of the build, but there it is. I'll go ahead and flash it across the screen, too, so that you can read it there. Um, all this gear, you're going to get it from a mission called the Grimace Blades, which I described to you earlier. Um, the guy that you fight in that, he is, up until you're doing Murabashi, he, that guy is the only way that you can get this gear. So, it sounds kind of like a bummer, but go ahead and kill him like 10, 20 times. Just make sure you get a full set. And honestly, it, it doesn't even really matter if it's a purple set. Um, or I mean, I'd at least try to get a blue set. But just try to at least get your four piece. The four piece is really the only important thing in here. I'm gonna explain why real fast. On the two piece, not so important. Skill key reduction, that's pretty darn good. I mean, that is handy. But the main reason you're getting it is the four piece, which is gonna give you close combat damage, 12.2%, and skill damage to sign of the cross, 30%. Guys, that's gonna give you like a 42.2% increase to damage. And then top that on top of like attacking from behind, which you're gonna be doing in Mirabashi with the uh, strategy that I'm gonna show you. Uh, I mean, you're just going to do tons and tons of damage. And if you've never had a uh, cool build like this, this is going to be a real shocker to you because you're probably used to just doing basic attacks. Uh, so you're going to go up to these bosses that have taken you like 5 to 10 minutes before to kill, and you're going to kill them in like 5 seconds. So it's pretty awesome. Um, so another thing to keep in mind, you don't have to do this. I highly suggest it. Just don't spend too much time and money on it because you're going to replace this gear pretty quickly doing Murabashi. If you're having a hard time with Murabashi, Go ahead and uh, increase your, uh, go to the blacksmith, basically. You're going to go to the blacksmith, go to reforge. Um, like on this one, I got human close combat damage, 16.4%. Obviously, that's 16.4% more damage than I'm doing. So if I'm having a hard time downing these guys quickly, that's going to help me out. Um, I added fire damage. Agility, agility damage bonus isn't so great because this is a heavier set. But any kind of damage that you can get, go ahead and take it. Um, but the more important thing as you start farming this, um, equipment drop rate, 5.7% luck, plus 24 on my helmet, Emirate earn, 5.9%. Those are really good stats for, for farming uh, because those are the things you're going to go for. Not so much equipment drop rate as item drop rate, which I have on my chest piece here. Um, item drop rate plus 25%. That's huge. Um, this is the only piece of gear that I'm aware of that you can get a full 25% on. Maybe the legs, but I don't think so. Uh, the reason why item drop rate is so important, I would put it above Emeretta uh, and equipment drop rate because you can get blacksmithing techs. Why are blacksmithing techs important? Blacksmithing techs are important because on this gear, this is a good example. See where it says receive firearms damage? See how it has that weird symbol next to it? What that symbol means is I cannot reforge that stat off this piece of gear. So that's pretty much stuck there. If you're trying to farm this set and you want to min-max it, Receive firearms damage is pretty garbage in most builds. I would have to kill that boss like 40 times to get one that has the stats that I like, um, or more importantly, a static stat, which is what that is, that's good. Um, an easier way of going about it, a much more time efficient way of going about it, is to just get all the mats you need to craft like 40 of those things and just knock them out. Um, and the ones that you craft that you don't like, you can still disassemble them which allows you to craft more and more. So it works out really well. But uh, you want to get as many of the blacksmithing techs early on in the game as you can. It'll help you out a lot later. Okay, guys, so to start off, go ahead and any damage increasing buffs, go ahead and throw them on. I'm just going to use a Carnage Scroll. Um, so on this first boss, you're not going to run very far because this guy comes at you fast, and he can paralyze you in the later uh, playthroughs like Way of the Strong. Um, so go ahead and run up here real fast. Throw your paralytic ground fire down. Wait for him to come up here. He's paralyzed. Get behind him. Bam. Get behind him again. Bam. I just two-shot him, guys. Um, now, early on, you might not be able to get him off so fast. 
Here we go. This is the guy that's important. Pay attention here. See what he dropped, guys? That's all the uh, Master Swordsman armor. Now, after you kill him... See how far away from the wall I am right here? I'm going to let this guy kill me right now. There's a reason why you want to die away from that wall. Now, you don't want to die all the way on the other side of the room where they're spawning. Um, you want to stay pretty much right where I died, and I'll show you why. Okay. The grave's right there, right? Impossible to miss. You're going to pick it up every time. Guess what happens if you die back here? If you die back here, you're going to spawn right here, and you're not going to see it. Well, after you've been farming this for like an hour to three hours, you're going to go one time. You're going to go all the way to the end of that room, and you're going to get murked. And you're going to look back, and you realize what you just did. You just lost like 70 million plus Emeretta experience, whatever you want to call it. I'm not saying it ever happened to me. I'm just saying don't let it happen to you. Yeah, it definitely happened to me like three different times, and it absolutely sucks. So don't let it happen to you guys. It, it, you're going to be tempted to not care. Trust me, it's worth it to go through the effort to just die in the right spot. So with that being said, we killed the second We killed the second guy, died on the third, right? It's real simple. Just rinse, repeat. Go ahead, paralyze him. Get behind him. Hit him. Walk around him. Hit him again. Oops. He's down. Throw it down. He's coming back at me. Bam. Bam. He's down. Now, let's just go ahead and assume that you've got all of the Master Swordsman gear that you like and you're comfortable with your set. I'm going to show you what you're going to do if you're that person. Now, notice how if you get behind them and attack them after they've already been on the ground once that they keep falling down. That's where this build gets real good. See that? He fell down. They'll only do that if you walk behind them. You've got to catch them right when they start to get up. And it'll keep tripping them up. They'll keep falling down. So you're essentially stun locking them. Now that guy that I killed right there, that's the last guy that you want to kill. This is the last guy in Mirabashi, the guy with the single sword. You do not want to kill him unless you want to finish the mission. Now this is going to get real simple, and you're going to understand everything. Notice how I can see my grave. Can't miss it, so I'm not going to forget. Pick that up. I'm at, let's see here. What is that? 2.9 million? X yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, 2.9 million. Uh, Amaretta, let's go ahead and do another run real quick. Okay guys, so we've made it. Back to that guy, back to the second to last boss again. Here's the last boss, same as last time. Gonna have him kill me over here. I'm not gonna get too close to the wall. Okay. Now remember, we're at 2.9 million experience, Emeretta, whatever you wanna call it last time, right? Pick it up. Now we're at 4 million. This is first playthrough. That's not too shabby for, like, less than two minutes of work. Um, so that is the point of Murabashi. And trust me, when you start doing this on Way of the Strong, uh, Way of the Wise, that stuff, the numbers start getting insane, like exponentially insane, how much experience you get. And on your second playthrough, you'll start getting gear called Ethereal. It's green gear. All the gear that I have equipped, almost all, that's Ethereal gear, the green gear. And all that really means is that it's going to give you more stats so like a, a blue piece of gear might have two stats on it like see where i have damage reduction equipment drop rate life um, blue piece of gear might have equipment drop rate and life uh, purple piece of gear will also have the receive firearms damage uh, green piece of gear you know it just that's it's a pretty simple system um, so 
the only reason I tell you all that is if you're doing this on your second playthrough, okay, after you've beaten the game once, you'll get the option whenever you start this up to um, give them Okacho Cups. You can give them 10. Give them the full 10 if you plan on farming this for a while because that's going to give you a full plus 10% chance to get Ethereal Gear to drop, which is pretty important because this is going to be a big source of your materials for crafting and reforging as well as your cash whenever you go to sell it. So that's it, guys. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and it'll help you a lot in your uh, future progress in the game. It'll speed things up. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask them in the comments. Like, follow, subscribe, and thanks for coming. Peace. Drop it.